this uh this past week has work has been very um stagnant and I'm very careful by saying that because um you say that and then everything starts happening <laughs> everyone wants stuff and then you're like why did I say that but um it's been very smooth um everything's been kind of quiet um there was a point in time where we were short staffed and in the middle of a big consolidation project so it was just a very stressful time so I try to be very grateful for these um quiet moments because you never know when that kind of thing's going to happen again and in this kind of you know work culture people are very you know easy to you know turn turn over especially in the service industry um people are always looking for the next best thing and luckily our um well my job division in particular has been very um they're really trying to increase our employee engagement so that the employees see more of the, you know, gratitude side of our, um, of our job. You know, we're not just asking them to do things time and time again, you know, we're kind of being like, Hey, well, we appreciate everything that you're doing. And it's not just a thank you. Like let's incentivize it. You know, let's give you a day off with pay or like, let's have a pizza party. I know people hate pizza parties, but you know, um, we do what we can, you know, we, do, we Who can't. Who hates a pizza party? Yeah. What? I was literally going to say, I love, a, I love a pizza party. You would be surprised. We were like, pizza, you know, but I'm just like, look, you don't have to bring your lunch today. So that's the one thing you don't have to worry about. And it's Costco pizza. Costco pizza is so good. Okay. By the slice, perfect. So, um, yeah, so I feel very happy for them that they feel um, that, you know, that gratitude and all that stuff. Um, um, personally, blessed and highly favored, um, continue, uh, continuously praying um, for God to reveal things to me as they come um, and not just kind of taking my own, you know, my own route. Because once you start getting impatient, you start getting those itchy fingers and like, what else can I do? You know, and that's not bad to like, you know, cause God always wants someone that's going to uh, work towards his promises. Like, you know, what, what are you praying about if you're not going to do anything? Um, but I also don't want to get overzealous and uh, start, you know, working on his behalf, you know, so I want to block my blessings, but um, life over here is good. I'm not complaining. Thank you. <laughs> say, get out the boat, Peter, go head on. Yeah. <laughs> Let's walk on board. <laughs> so I'm sorry. So um, it's totally random. It's nothing to do with anything. <laughs> Except for you said blessed and highly favored. And it just reminded me of like this person I used to go to church with and they would always say blessed and highly flavored. <laughs> Not flavored. <laughs> Did they know? Were they just being uh, yeah, No, I, can, I can't unhear it. So anytime somebody says blessed and highly flavored. I'm that too. I'd be like, I just hear flavored in my mind. So it's fine. Yeah. So it was just, he would like, was mocking like Christianese language, like oh. just for fun, like in yeah. love, not like in a disrespectful way. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, we, we clown each other, right? So, right, right, right. Like, oh yeah, blessing highly flavored. And, you know, <laughs> just little, little simple things like, you know, speaking in tongues and say, untie my bow tie. <laughs> oh my gosh no and a honda corolla <laughs> a honda and a corolla <laughs> it's not funny but you know i'm like that you know if you say that a few times fast i'm just i saying. wouldn't know okay i mean when you in kojic church you there's a lot of things that you just anyway, right anyway, it was in love um but yeah yeah, yeah but, i thought of that when you said that that is hilarious <laughs> In children's choir, they made us sing a uh, watermelon cantaloupe when we didn't know the words. Oh, I so, still do that. Right. <laughs> Nobody's going to know, girl. Watermelon cantaloupe when nobody know. <laughs> watermelon is the, is the go-to. Drag it out. Every time. <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> that part. That part. 
Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to derail us. No, I was in. I was in. Okay. I'm Did happy to, to happy to share. Feel I'm free gonna... to go. Ziggy's going a little crazy, so if you can hear her in the background, my apologies. Ziggy's okay. your dog again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's a chocolate lab. Oh, that's right. Chocolate. She's a little cutie, but yeah, she's a uh, hyped right now. <laughs> yeah, I had two yellow labs. They were like high that. energy for a long time. And need lots of space to run. Yes, yes. Yeah, we went for a nice long walk this morning. So she, I thought was getting some energy out, but clearly not enough. Yeah. <laughs> um, But all is well in my world. Uh, I laugh because like we've been talking about careers and like I'm trying not to center that. So I will think about the last week from a different perspective. Uh, I had the pleasure of coming down to San Jose for all of what, 36 hours Saw Janie, got to spend some time with her, so that was wonderful. And on both my flights, they were direct flights, pretty short, but chatted with people. I usually am like, headphones in, please don't bother me. And like, chatted with people both ways. And on the way back, I spoke with a woman who is really involved in her church and was like leading a discussion on oaths and marriage. And we just ended up chatting about kind of like spirituality, religion, and like, it was nice because she helped me find some communities up in Portland, too. Like, I love this, so I'm not trying to leave anytime soon. And I'm so grateful for these virtual options. Um, but it's nice to have some in-person community as well. So I was happy to kind of see how, how the Lord is working in fun ways. And like, like I said, the first time I talked to someone, it was like a nice, meaningful connection. Um yeah. What else? Work is chill. We're going to talk about work. <laughs> You're so brave. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a headphones. Like you can't see me right now. Person on a flight. <laughs> Only I always have a hard time gauging. Like, do you want to keep talking to me? Like, should I keep asking questions? Cause I will ask the questions, but I also like don't want to bug you if you're not trying to. So like, I just let them kind of talk and they both seemed like they were curious. So it's risky. I yeah. feel like I get a lot of people who be in a whole on a whole other planet that want to chat the whole time about life on their planet. And I'm like, Ooh. Mm. Mm. I know the man on the first flight got political. Luckily, we were on like the same side of the spectrum. But I was like, my guy, this is risky topic for a plain stranger. Right. I'm I just saying it could be a long ride after a while. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Be like, mm. I mean, they're great opportunities. That's why I say you're brave. I feel like I could do better. I should. It's not that I have a problem talking with people, right? It's just, it's you know, I care, right? Like, so when if I'm talking to you, I'm fully invested and I'm listening and I'm like trying to, you know, think and you know, I'm prayerfully like seeking the Lord about how to respond and you know. Like, what do you, what do you really need and how, you know, it's, it's, it can be a little bit of ministry, you know? Um, and I feel like the planes are my place to hide <laughs> from the Lord. Like, mm -mm, not doing it today. Find somebody else, Jesus. Find somebody <laughs> Which I shouldn't do. Yeah, it was interesting because I saw her writing in her notebook and definitely like she had like Matthew 5 written down so I was super curious and was like should I ask her and I didn't and then she brought it up and was like I'm getting ready to lead a discussion um like for my women's group and I was like oh is this church related and then she went on to like share she was doing seminary and like there is a it's a center for leadership development that has this whole series of free videos related to ministry and so I'm going to check that out. Like, I'm really stoked. Nice. Yeah. Did so I'll share. What they, what did she say what they were talking about for their women's ministry? Um, That week it was marriage and oaths. But she was like trying to be mindful of marriage being a sticky topic because it's like there are some single folk, there are some divorced women, like all across the spectrum of members that would be in attendance and like how to be mindful of that lived experience without making people feel uncomfortable so I think they were focusing she was saying more on like oaths as a whole which still like encompasses marriage but not as 
direct of a call out? Hmm. You know, I think not today, but I would love for us. <laughs> Let me give my disclaimers, not today. Um, but I think that would be a great conversation for us to have just because, you know, I, we have so many different expectations and impositions when it comes to, and implications, I should say, in regards to like marriage. And I'm just, the more I study, the more I'm like, how come we don't talk about this? You know, mm. it's almost like this, thing that makes you complete and you know it's more self-serving than reflective of God and anyways I don't want to go all the way down there but <laughs> I, I was like yes I was like please tell me your thoughts <laughs> um I, I would love for us to talk about that but I feel like um right now because Janie when you were talking and you were talking about like it's like kind of quiet at work you know I'm feeling a little bit um like that as well just all around right especially since you know my grandmother recently passed away and we had like a lot of family here and like work was really busy and now it just feels very quiet right um and I was like praying about this and just kind of like reflecting and you know, with Easter, you know, I just, I can't help but to think about Christ on the cross and how, like, you know, even in his last hours, like, he spent all of his, you know, time and, like, the last few years in ministry, like, surrounded by people and, you know, his disciples and thousands of people that, you know, he ministered to, um, and, but how isolating and lonely it felt up on the cross and how like you know just that moment of before you know going into glory right and I think about that like sometimes these periods in our life right these quiet times and how it's like this quiet season that feels like a little bit can feel a little isolating um and and dark and difficult and painful sometimes, but it's like the preparation before God's move in our in our life. Um, and so I'm trying to at this moment, cause you know, I've gone through a few of these cycles and seeing how God always shows up, right? To not go into that place of like, oh, <laughs> what was me, right? And like this period of like depression, right? But really how do I, um, you know, express gratitude with all of me for this quiet time, right? And this like alone time and this like season of like isolation because I know God is working something out and God is preparing, you know, for the next. Um, and so not just to be idle or not kind of like occupy my time with just doing random things, but to be intentional, um, you know, on using this as a season of, of preparation and just having to endure. No doubt. I think um, something pastor said yesterday, um, which kind of like, it didn't like, it wasn't like, you know, how you know what the word says, but when it's said another way, you're like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. And um, when he he had already revealed or he had already told his disciples that, you know, this time would come where he would, you know, be crucified. And then he would um, come back on the third day. And even when that happened, they still didn't believe him until they remembered what he had told them. So even when we go through those, those times of where we don't know what God has planned for us, it's like, it's still going to happen, you know, whether we remember it or not. And it's sometimes other people that bring to remembrance those promises. You know, it's not always us to be like, oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. God totally revealed that to me. He may have not, you know, ministered that to you, but it's someone that was in that conversation, in that room, in that church sermon that says, you know, something that brings into remembrance God's promise that he has for you. Because I sometimes don't even realize, like, I'm not 
the one that, you know, is going to be always in the know. And that's hard because it's, you know, it's your life. You feel very selfish about it. Like, why don't I know um, what's to come? What's in the future? You know, what's, what, what's my destiny. Um, but it's, that's the point for God, for you to trust God and, you know, his path and, you know, what he's calling um, and what he will reveal to you, you know? So it was like a really like light bulb moment, but it was just very eye opening Cause I'm like, wow, you know, I, I did realize in some sense that I wouldn't, you know, know everything obviously, but to know that I I will remember these moments, these conversations when those promises do come. Oh yeah. Tanya did say that, you know, Tanya did re reveal this, Tanya did share this or Corinne did share this with me. And um, I'm like, that's God's promise working, you know, in those different times of life. It's already been done. You know, whatever God has for your life has already been done. It's just you kind of following those, those little pinpoints in your life to kind of like, you know, he's always been there guiding me through. I just didn't see it. You know, I was always like, you know, finding these hard moments, these, these, you know, happy moments or, you know, happy moments. Um <laughs> as it's called milestones, you know, but yeah, that, that, that definitely, that definitely helps. How do y'all, I'm just curious, cause sometimes it is, it sounds You're going nice. to steal my question. I know. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no. yeah. I don't want to interrupt. Go. Well, I already, I was just going to, no. you know, like, I'm just curious. Cause it's always easy to look back and say like, look what God did. Right. But in the moment, it don't feel like that. Right you know, in the moment, I mean, even scripture says like, yeah, you're going through this so you can help somebody else. And when you kind of going through, like, I don't want to hear that. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> Not helpful for me, you know? So I'm, I was just curious from y'all, you know, when you have these kind of like moments of like in between, right. Where you're not really sure you're not really hearing from God. And it's like, like, how do you wait? You know, what does that look like? Or like, what do you, what do you do? How do you navigate that? Yeah, I was, was pretty much going to say similar. Yeah, like looking back, it's like so easy to say that. Like, oh yeah, like trust in the Lord, lean not on your own understanding. All's going to be great. But like, how do you do that in the immediate moment? Like hindsight, I can kind of reflect and be like, okay, even in this like bad situation, like I don't have to understand as much as the controlling side of me wants to understand. Like that's part of the journey as a Christian is like having trust that it's all going to work out. Um, so yeah, I think like ultimately what I was going to ask is like, how can I be better about that in the moment of what are, what are some triggers I can like come up with to have that be my first thought of like, okay, no, nope, this is part of God's plan. It's going to be okay. Rather than reacting in like the human way that I probably want to. My reaction's kind of always been like it, especially if it's something bad and I have a kind of a bad habit of doing this. I always think, well, I must have done something to, de to deserve this if it's something bad, you know, and I'm just like, it's a bad habit. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm like, well, girl, I'm about to come through. The devil is alive. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a negative thought. That's why I'm like, I always try to process that out. Cause I'm like, you know, I must've done something, you know, I must've sent, sent somewhere in I'm like, we are sinners by nature. So to always try to be like, oh, I must, you know, it's, it's a negative pattern to put yourself in because you're not looking at, at the broader perspective of the situation. Um, something that God, something that was intended for bad. Um, there's a, I don't know what's, I don't know the wording for that. Something intended, God intended for good for me. I'll find it and get back to you. But um, yeah, those, the, those situations that I, that I have those moments where I'm like, why is this happening to me? And you automatically go to the negative. Well, I must've done something to deserve this. And immediately I try to catch myself and be like, Janie, this is a bad situation, but maybe not tomorrow, maybe not the next day, you will look back and see that God meant this for your good. You know, this bad situation. And during what you're saying, during that bad situation, you're not like 
you're not saying, oh, thank you, Jesus, for this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No, no, no. You're praying. You're like, why me? You know, why is this happening to me? Why now? Like, why are these, you know, everything, why is everything coming against? And you're thinking like these weapons are, you know, prospering. You know, God said no weapon uh, will form against me shall prosper. But they're all forming. And the forming feels like it's prospering, you know, in the moment. You're like... <laughs> these weapons are firing, you know? <laughs> and it's like, but you know, you have to re remember like God is keeping you through all these moments for a reason. So you can look back and cause if you, if you just in that moment, be like, pretend like it's not for good, then what are you doing? You know, you're sitting in, you're sitting in a place of just negativity and you're not seeing the prosper, the prospering that's happening. And I always try to think long-term, long-term and not just sit in like what's happening now. Cause that's enough. That's enough of hardship. Just knowing that you're going through something hard to put that extra burden on yourself and to make it even worse, just draws you back, you know, and puts you even a, in a worse situation that you already are in. So I'd say you just push through it and just, you know, in that, in that prayer and that meditation, just, you know, of course, ask God why, because you're having a conversation and you know, he may reveal it to you. He may not. God doesn't always reveal things in real time um, because he doesn't work in our, you know, in our uh, realm of time, you know, but he may give you a sense of peace or, you know, some sense of understanding. Um, sometimes he will give me like, even just like when I'm very anxious or I'm very upset about something, just like a very cool, like soothing breeze will bring me peace. And it's just something so frivolous, well, to some people, but in that moment, it just brings me back to present and like allows me to breathe and be like, you know what, Janie, you're doing a little bit too much. And sometimes I am doing a little bit too much because I look back, I'm like, that was really stupid. And it was necessary. <laughs> I like how I like how when you said those these weapons are really firing, that both Corinne and I started laughing. <laughs> Because <laughs> it feels that way. It's like, gosh, you said it was going to prosper, but it feels like they are. You know, it, it does. Like yeah. It. So, I mean, when you were telling that story, I was like, wait a minute. Okay. How have I approached recent situations? And like, I've really had a mentality of like, it could be worse. So like, thank mm -hmm. you, God, that it was only this bad because it could have been worse. Like this week, my car got broken into. They didn't steal anything, but I had the hassle of like, having to go get my window repaired right before I was supposed to drive two hours to my hometown and like drop my dog off. So I couldn't drop my dog off. I had to find a dog sitter, all this stuff before trying to leave for San Jose. I ended up missing my flight, had a package stolen. It was just like all these things that like in a typical, I think like a year ago, I would have been like, I can't handle any of this. Like, let me just break down. And I was kind of like, if I meant to make my flight, I'll make my flight. If like, it could have been worse. They could have stolen stuff out of my car. Like, yeah, I have to go replace the window, but thank goodness it like, thank you that it was only this. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, like, seriously, all because of God, like able to handle it and just like, all right, we did it. And now well, here we are. And like totally forgot about that in my initial week recap. <laughs> so you didn't even, yeah I forgot all that happened see that. Look, <laughs> moving you look, through already look at just the peace of God oh <laughs> you know I can't help but to think of James as you were talking you know count it all joy when you consider you know face trials of many kind for your mm. faith you know um uh your faith is tested and your endurance grows let me just find let me just find it that there. word joy <laughs> listen let me let me just get this <laughs> the state right of now. joy yeah so have... I'm not sitting here paraphrasing but y'all got the point you understand what I'm saying mm -hmm. um it's, that it's always weird. that always scares me too because I'm like God gives his you know his toughest trials to his best soldiers you know and I'm like am I the best soldier you got yeah, no. yeah. But, but is, that a, is that a worldly phrase or is that uh, right but I'm like Joe because he was putting it on Joe you know he said he said look you can have Joe but you can't take his you can't take his life and I'm like now Jesus Joe was faithful <laughs> he was faithful <laughs> through it all and I'm just like <laughs> I, he, I, I say that because 
this this is how I feel like we get tripped up, right? Yeah. Like things have enough scripture or like connotation of scripture. And I'm not, I'm and I'm just saying this like gently, right? Like I actually don't know if that's in the Bible. Like I'd have to really ponder and think and like think that through. Is there enough scripture to support that? I don't I don't know that off the top of my head. But I do want to challenge us all in this space, right? That that those are phrases that we all use. This goes back to what I was saying earlier about homeboy saying like I'm blessed and highly flavored. Right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> like we kind of joke and things like um we we use things but I feel like we can easily get tripped up because we start quoting those things instead of, you know, when Jesus was um faced by Satan, right? Like Jesus used the scripture. He quoted mm-hmm. what the scripture said, right? Like that's our defense, mm-hmm. right? Our colloquialisms have no power mm-hmm. in a real fight and a real spiritual fight, right? So that's why I say like, I question, I push back on these things for myself because to like our discussion right here, right? Like we can kind of chant things that have no power. Mm-hmm. and you know and I've done that right like what's going on and like you know to like the question that you were saying about um like what do we do right I mean well after I cry and yell and scream to the Lord and get all my feelings out right um because I feel like that is something right that we should do we should acknowledge our our feelings and how what's going on, how we're feeling in that moment, God cares, but we can't stay in our feelings and our feelings are not the be all end all. And obviously, you know, Corinne, as you were saying, like, you know, if this were me some time ago, I would have been all upset, but you know, now, right? Like that time and that moment of kicking, screaming and crying and being frustrated, right? Like, becomes fewer and far between to where you can just confidently walk in, you know, God's provision. The scripture I was looking for was James (laughs) one, starting at verse two, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete needing nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's another version that talks about, well, let me see, I'll find it. Um, but one of the things that I had to learn how to do was to speak the word over my life, like in the moments, right? So whatever I'm going through, finding at least a scripture, right? That speaks to my circumstances. So whether, and even this one, right? Like, <laughs> Okay, Lord, you said consider this all joy. My window's busted. Mm-hmm. Glory to your name. <laughs> yeah, no, that one, one of my go tos. And then, like, trust the Lord with all your heart and yeah. be not on your own understanding. It's like, okay, yep, I don't need to, like, know yeah. the why behind it. Just chill out and accept it and move forward. And it's one of those things, too, where it's like, I'm going to just keep saying it till it gets down in there and mm-hmm. I believe it. Because right now, like, you know, considered all joy. How is this joyful? I don't want to consider this joyful. Right. right? Um, even, you know, the beating yourself up, right? Like I'm really hard on myself. So I totally feel you on that. I was like, mm-hmm. that's all I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> um, but I do the same thing, right? Like where you start questioning yourself and second guessing yourself and, and really say, and taking the blame. Mm-hmm. Right. And, um, when I feel like that, I, I, I still have to actively push back, right. And fight back and say, for now, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ, yeah. right? Like Satan, you are the accuser. And the answer is no, <laughs> like, you know, God's grace is sufficient, right? He's working all things together for my good, right? When I am weak, then he is strong. Like I'm going to boast about my weaknesses and my failures and my shortcomings because I know that God is going to come through. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I still, even right now, have to like continue to say those things because those thoughts come, those, those, um, those words come. But what I've found is that speaking the word, finding at least one scripture, or three, 
right, that can speak to that situation. And even if I just have to say it over and over and over again, while I go for a walk, you know, um, if I'm writing it, um, you know, doing that, but it's the word that has the power, but also the authority over our circumstances. <clears throat> it's so true. It's so true. When you were talking about circumstances, I was um, thinking about my car, my whole um, car trouble. I went in for one recall and they said, well, uh, we're gonna have to keep your car for like a month because your engine test failed. And I was just really like, you, you don't, you, it, it always happens when you're like least expecting it. And that day I got all the way home and realized I left my house keys on my car keys at the dealership and my phone died. So I couldn't call anyone. <laughs> and I was just like, enough, <laughs> you know, like you give, you're giving me a lot right now, but after that, like, after I was like, you know what, it is what it is. Like my car is in the shop. I could have easily broke down on the freeway or gotten into a car accident. You know, I'm glad that I was able to take it in when I did and they were able to identify it when they did. And now I have my car back less than two weeks later with a brand new engine, you know? And I'm just like, look at God just working you know, and in the moment, it's just so difficult to see because it's like, who, why is all this happening at once? Sometimes he just throws you ball after ball, ball. I'm like, look, I don't have any more hands. You know, I can't deal with it. Like, you know, but when you, when you get on the other side and you get to that other side, that's, that's that remember it. Like, I didn't see it in the moment. <laughs> I didn't see it in the moment, but I'm so glad I see it now. Uh, and when we have those myths that gives us the opportunity to, to testify to people, these little, these little moments where we feel doubt or we feel frustrated or we feel like uh, the world is against us really help for people that don't have that kind of relationship with God. You know what I'm saying? People that are just moving through life with no kind of guidance and just think that the world's against them, you know, sharing with them that there is joy in this world even in the bad moments and when you know you feel like life is against you and bringing to um, bringing to remembrance have you gone through worse you know and look where you're at now and when you when you're in that moment they don't always they don't always see that and I realize that because some people don't have that kind of relationship but they'll remember what you said and they'll be like you know what I know that I'm going through this now but how will I feel tomorrow or the next day, you know, and it's not all just negative, you know, you're looking at the brighter point, points, you're not just seeing the bad and everything, you're bringing those little instances where it's like, you know what, it wasn't that bad, or you know what, it could have been worse, or you know what, God was on my side, or God was there the entire time leading me, and I just, I just didn't see it. The other version I was looking for was that uh, I was reading the NLT version from James, mm -hmm. when if you just even like the new king james version says to count it all joy when you fall into tr various trials knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience mm. how many y'all ever prayed for patience this listen this I, one, I, was, to. I was told not to <laughs> whoever you told you that read their bible yeah, because it was like, you ask for patience, God will put you in a situation to be patient. He's not going to be like, here you go. Here's patience. He's going to be like, right. I'm going to send you some people. <laughs> and here's where I said, I was like, Lord, help me to be patient. And it was like, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be complete and lacking nothing, right? Trials work with patience. So you want patience, you're praying for trials. And I said, oh, no, we're done. We're done. <laughs> that's where, it's, we're that's done where it comes from. Prayer. You got to get patience from somewhere. Put it into practice. <laughs> God said, here you go. Let's see you be patient. Practice. Practice makes perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm like, God, I'm, I got enough already. I'm practicing. <laughs> but that's yeah, a that's, bold prayer. That's a bold prayer right there. For sure. I need praying for patience. I mean, you know, but still. No, those old time, uh, old time Baptist people was like, girl, don't you pray for no patience. <laughs> God will send you someone to make you patient. I'm like, you know what? That's 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 right. That's right. So, 
Yes, but it is necessary. I mean, it's the mm-hmm. fruit of the spirit. There should be some some fruit. So, I feel like it. Um, there's also a part of like I want to get to a place where I'm, you know, pray bold prayers, right? Like, you know, if you're praying for patience, right? You understand what you're praying for, mm. right? But not wanting to pray the prayers that would allow us to kind of like. Get you know, past you're trying to get work out, right? Like you're you're going to get on the treadmill. You're going to lift up weights, right? Like you're going to do the things that are challenging or hard or that are going to push you to your limit so that you can grow and so that you can accomplish your goals. And, you know, I don't know. Do y'all feel like you pray prayers that like push you and challenge you to grow or that, you know, Lord, I pray I don't have to get on the treadmill today. <laughs> <laughs> I pray for discipline because I'm like if I feel like he he if I have discipline then those things will come because sometimes that's what's what, what's lacking is the motivation to just want like Lord I know that there are some things that I will not want to do today but I pray that you provide me the discipline or the you know the energy or the things that it will take for me to accomplish these things and um, even when I'm up against other things I'm like this is the, like the patience, these are the things he's putting in place. So I will be disciplined. It, it does not come without work. God's just not gonna be like, here's discipline. Enjoy. Now go to the gym. Cause then everybody <laughs> would be at the gym. Mm-hmm. Right. But it's like, here's an opportunity to be disciplined. How will you handle the situation? And it's like, you know, putting into practice, it's a daily practice, but those are the, I feel like the, um, the prayers that get me to where I need to be it's not just like oh lord give me a six pack by by spring that is part of the prayer I do throw that in there because he said be specific with what you want you know so (laughs) um I try to incorporate the things that I will need to get through that so like you know guide me through those things to get to this ultimate goal if it be your will if it be your will because it may not come for another year (laughs) No, that's an area I could definitely be more intentional in. Like, I'm always heavy on the gratitude and like, if it's part of your plan, like it will be, but I think I could be more specific and like bold in my, my asks, my desires for myself and like, yeah, guidance on how to get there. Yeah. But it's your prayer, you know, and you're just like you said, oh, no, I know it is, but these are yeah. also things that I aspire for. So like, why not like be more intentional about bringing, bringing the one who's going to help me get there into it. The fold. Right. Right. Cause I'm like, you can throw anything out there. If God don't want him, like, if it be your will, Lord, I know I, I want this a hundred thousand dollar car, but yeah. right now it may not be in his. Place. I know that's something I definitely struggle with just cause I don't like a lot of time to ask for things in general. Mm-hmm. So it's like, that's just y'all, not y'all mean not, you don't pray for for a Bentley and God hasn't answered it <laughs> <laughs> I pray <laughs> I'm like Lord if it be your will let that Bentley just drop off <laughs> <laughs> no but I know he, there's things that I need to do to get there because like you you'll have these bold prayers but you have not done the work to get there so it's mm-hmm. like you're asking me of all these things because he's saying you know tell me the desires of your heart you know but are you working to get to those things? Because it's not going to just be handed. It's not just, just going to drop out of the sky. You know? But I'm all, I guess like I like manna struggle. from heaven. <laughs> <laughs> I struggle in asking for those things because I'm like, why not just be grateful for what you already have and like focus on that piece? And I always have this like very, I guess, dark mindset of like, if I don't pray, like, thanks for this thing. Like, what if it's gone tomorrow? Like, that's mm-hmm. kind of my mentality of it. And like, I don't know. But that's a process. I mean, that's part of the prayer. Like the way I, this way I pray, like it's a system. Like, first of all, thank, thank God for what he's already done. Praise, repent, exactly. uh, ask, yield. Pray. Exactly. Girl, you got the steps. You can do all of the that. Bible one says you have not because you ask not. Ask not. <laughs> Go through the whole prayer, you know. Thank God for what you already have done. Thank you, Lord. These are the desires of my heart. If it be your will, let it be done. And give me the, you know, the wherewithal to get there. 
you know, and you can do it all. You can ask it I all. Just, yeah, I just don't do that on a regular basis. I'm like, yeah. a, once a quarter, let me throw the A in there. And then... <laughs> just in case you forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I just pry the rest of the time. <laughs> you know, I, I tend to watch different sermons online. And um, I don't know if y'all are familiar with Stephen Furtick. He has a church mm-hmm. on, on the East Coast. I'll send you one of his messages. But um he was talking his like one of the one of his sermons recently um he gave the example right of like how he was working out and was working out with like a bodybuilder like a legit bodybuilder and he heard him oh no okay sorry something just popped up on my screen um while they were working out, he told the person who was spotting him to come over here and help me fail. And he was like, help you fail, right? Mm -hmm. And he was like, Mm -hmm. because that's, you know, Mm -hmm. if you're doing reps and you're doing like, you know, three sets of 10, when you really could be doing 20 Mm -hmm. or more, right? Like you don't get any growth from that. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like the growth happens when you go to your limit and then go like one more. So it's like when he's about to fail, like he can't push it up anymore. He needs a spotter to help him like finish that last rep in order to grow. And like Mm -hmm. how he reflected on that and um, that, you know, that was like, wow, do I ever ask God to help me to fail, right? Like Mm -hmm. to go beyond my limits and trust him, you know? Um, for the purpose of growth and I was like oh yeah definitely. I don't think I asked that I do that on my own <laughs> <laughs> you mean like I got it Jesus thank I, got, I got the failing part okay. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> no but that's good that's really good that's really good because yeah. I've seen a lot of a lot of videos talking about like are you failing when you're at the gym and I was just like what And it's like, you have to push yourself to that failing, like do those reps until you fail. And then you'll start seeing those progressions. You know, you have to continuously push yourself beyond your limits to know, you know, what you're capable of, because the next time you do it, the failure point's going to keep, keep growing, keep growing. And that's how you grow. That's really good. That's really good. So it was just a reminder for me spiritually of like, am I being too comfortable? Right. Um, you know, you you get to a place where the trials that used to bother you don't bother you anymore and you're good and you kind of, you know, just go through or is it a place where like, hey, I need to get out the boat, you know, I need to be uncomfortable and be okay with being uncomfortable um, and pursue things in the Lord, right, that scare me or mm-hmm. that, you know, that challenge me like taking my headphones off on an airplane and talking to the person next to me. Anytime I'm at, I don't know why specifically Chick-fil-A, mostly because I'm there alone often. Um, But anytime I'm there alone and I see someone else eating alone, I'm always so tempted to go up and be like, do you want to dine together? That is a blessing. But that like, that's on my bucket list, I guess. I commend you for doing that. I'm like, I always try to get Jamie to go to restaurants with me and sit separately in there. And act like strangers. I'm like, <laughs> or like pretend like, like we're <laughs> Yeah, because no way. Anyway. I mean, I applaud you for doing that because I'm like, you never ca- catch me out in the wild. <laughs> You're like, what? What? Mm, you don't see me. Yeah. So that's a blessing to have to have that, you know, spirit of, um, what would you call that? The spirit of community. I feel like you have. That's that evangelist in you. That's what mm-hmm. that is. <laughs> the no, woman no. on the plane was like, you have hospitality in you. I was like, I didn't know that was one, but I'll take it. <laughs> it was like okay. hospitality. Mm-hmm. This is totally a tangent, but I'm going to speak it anyway. Um, Bible study this week, we were talking about kind of like the history or like throughout the Bible, having women kind of deliver big news and it being weird for the times. And then I was kind of thinking through it a little bit more of like, I think it's almost a way for the men to test their faith one more time. because they're like, 
oh, this is absurd. Like, who would believe this? This woman is sharing this. And then they like, okay, but I kind of have to believe it. So I don't know. That's super random. But um, thinking about the historical context, another suggestion this woman, this, this kind stranger on the plane gave was, I think it's the Bema podcast, B-E-M-A. And it walks through the context of the Bible, like from a historical perspective. And just the way we've been kind of dissecting different versions of the Bible and like words specifically, I thought that could be a cool thing to dive into. It's called Bema? B-E-M-A. Okay, I'll have to look that up. Bema. But yeah, I, I yes. cannot give you my own uh, personal recommendation on it yet. Just passing along and I will check it out <laughs> on my own as well. So don't don't vouch for anything (laughs) (laughs) I feel like God delivers those messages in the you know most randomest way like you just would never know you would never know Mm -hmm. any final thoughts for the for the good of the group (laughs) Jesus still saves Mm. Don't we know it? (laughs) Yes. Happy Resurrection Monday. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I'm in my Jesus year, so um, I'm praying lots of love and light. Continue to shower down. 33, I'll be 33 this year. Oh, I was like, Jesus year. Mm -hmm. I'm in my Jesus year, so knowing good things are coming, because I said that. (laughs) <laughs> yeah but yeah um all good all good things um I wanted to kind of like encompass everything that we've um talked about in um saying that although we have these moments where we like where we have doubt you know and we struggle with the path that God has put us on um, with you know the daily trials and tribulations that we go through and even the, the quiet still moments um, he's continuously working and um, um, fulfilling those promises and to always be conscious and aware of that um, and even in those moments where you're just like crying out why God you know it'll be it'll be you know better the next time it comes around um, there are times I've cried and I have no idea why like, why was I so upset on at this moment? Why was I, you know, upset with this person? Or why did I, you know, lose relationships? And looking back at it now, I am so grateful that those moments happened as hard as they were when they came, you know, you just look back and say like, thank you God that you brought me through and gave me the wisdom because that's where all these experiences come from, um, providing um, the wisdom to, you know, pay it forward to the next person that may be going through it. So just very grateful, grateful for the good and the bad. Yeah, good to remember. And we might like, who might we be, who might be watching too? Right. Yeah.